Hello and welcome to the Standing Waves Professional Development course. So you'll be learning about standing waves and beats in this course. But in order to understand these things, we're going to need to start by looking at what a wave actually is. So we'll be looking at what waves are and different ways that we can categorise waves. Next you'll be introduced to an equation to describe waves. So we'll write down a sinusoidal equation that can be used to describe many different types of waves. And then we'll be looking at the principle of superposition which tells us how to add together multiple waves in the same medium, which is something that we're going to need to do to work out how standing waves and beats occur. And then because physics is an experimental science, we'll show you some experiments you could do with your students at school to observe standing wave and beat phenomenon. Okay, so to start with, what is a wave? Well, a wave is a disturbance that carries energy but not matter over long distances. So the picture you should have in your head of a wave is imagine ocean waves deep out to sea. If you're in a boat on some ocean waves going past, you're going up and down, up and down, up and down regularly through time. So that's the picture you should have rather than the waves breaking on the beach, which is a very different phenomenon. As a wave passes, matter can move short distances. So on that ocean wave, the water is moving up and down, but it doesn't move over long distances. It's the wave carrying the energy which moves over long distances, whereas as we'll see, the matter just moves short distances and is continually returning to its equilibrium position. So one way that we can classify waves is as either electromagnetic or mechanical. Mechanical waves are waves that require a medium to travel through. Sound is an example of a mechanical wave. So let's have a look now at a demonstration that will prove to you that sound does require a medium to travel through. So this demonstration is going to show you that sound really does need a medium to travel through. So here I've got a bell jar, which is currently filled with air. It's attached to this vacuum pump, which I'm going to turn on shortly, which will pump the air out from inside the bell jar, creating a vacuum. You can see the pressure inside the bell jar from this gauge here. Inside the bell jar, there's a bell, which I'll turn on now. And now we'll turn on the vacuum. So now a lot of the air has been removed from the bell jar and you can hear that the bell is a lot quieter. We can still hear it a little bit because there is some connection between the bell and the outsides of the bell jar and sound can travel through the material this way. But what we'll do now is we'll let the air back into the jar and you can listen to the sound that the bell makes as the air returns to the jar. So there you go, sound really does need a medium to travel through. So hopefully that's convinced you that sound is a mechanical wave as it needs a medium to travel through. So all those space movies you see where there's an enormous explosion, the spaceship blows up and then you hear a really loud boom are all wrong because Sound does not travel through space. In space, nobody would hear you scream. Other examples of mechanical waves include waves going along a string or a spring, waves out at sea, and earthquake waves. 
Now the other category for waves is electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves literally consist of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. They do not require a medium to travel through, so do travel through a vacuum. They actually travel faster through a vacuum when, than when there's a medium present. So if light travels from a vacuum into water or air, it actually slows down. So common examples of electromagnetic waves include light, radio waves, microwaves, gamma rays, x-rays. You can see all the different types of electromagnetic radiation in the figure here.